Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Saturday, April 13th, 2024. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Saturday in Major League Baseball. First up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the New York Mets. We're going to see Alec Marsh and Sean Manaya as the projected starters. You know, while I really like this Royals team this season, they're playing pretty good baseball right now. I do think Alec Marsh is the weakest link in this rotation, and we saw him struggle quite a bit in that last game against the White Sox. It was four and two-thirds innings of eight-hit baseball with three earned runs. Now, the Royals were able to come back in that game and win. It's still five to three, the final score. But that was against the White Sox. Now you're playing, you know, on the road here against a much better team, in my opinion, in the Mets and a team that opened the season, you know, really struggling. But they've been better as of late. And I think Sean Manaya on the other side just pitching so well this season. I mentioned, you know, I didn't really love the pickup for the Mets in the offseason. And I just didn't think it really made a lot of sense. But he pitched so well in spring training. He's done so well in the regular season. 11 innings combined of one earned run baseball with 14 strikeouts. Manaya has been exactly what the Mets have been hoping for. And the Royals are much better against righties than lefties offensively. So I think the matchup benefits uh, Manaya as well. I'm going to go with the New York Mets here on the money line. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Chicago White Sox. Nick Lodolo and Garrett Crochet are your starters. You know, last year, disappointing season for Lodolo, battled some injuries. The ERA was over six by the end of the season in the, at the major league level. You know, this year, this is going to be his uh, regular season debut here. And I expect a good start for Lodolo. I also think he's going to be a nice option in this Reds rotation. I think he has a lot of potential, similar to a guy like Graham Ashcraft, but Lodolo's got really good strikeout stuff. So I think that, you know, he puts together a good outing here against a White Sox team. It's ranked 24th in Team OPS against lefties. Now, Garrett Crochet, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty tough matchup against the Reds, who have good numbers, OPS, and isolated power-wise against lefties. However, Cincinnati strikes out quite a bit against Southpaws, 29.4% as a team with a low walk rate to go with it. So that certainly benefits Crochet, who's got 21 strikeouts, one of the most strikeouts in, in baseball right now through his first 18 innings of work. I said he is the MVP of the White Sox this season. Doesn't really take much to be that right now, but... Nonetheless, he's been a really good starting pitching option, somebody that wasn't a starting pitcher the last couple of years. He's mostly featured as a reliever, and you know he's, he's been able to pitch well. I mean, last game wasn't his best start against the Royals, but it is a very good Royals team, and it was still five innings of two-run ball with five strikeouts and no walk, so it really wasn't that bad of an outing, but he did give up a home run. I expect the Reds to win this game. I like their chances on the money line. I'd lean towards the under as well. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Dakota Hudson and Bowden Francis are your starters. You know, Bowden Francis has certainly struggled. You know, 0-2 with that 12.96 ERA. You know, he's given up seven earned and five earned in his first two games. But those were against the Astros and the Yankees, both on the road. It's going to be his first home game against a team like the Rockies, who, you know, obviously not been great offensively on the road this season and previous years. I think Francis puts together a solid outing. I mean, he still has 12 strikeouts in eight and a third innings. He's got to watch out for the sharp contact, you know, giving up four home runs in those first two games. But I think he puts together his best start of the season by far. I think the Blue Jays' bullpen still one of the better bullpens in the American League. I think they followed up with, you know, pretty good performance. And I think the Blue Jays' bats, while they're not great right now against right-handed pitching, I still think they get to Hudson, who's not my favorite starting pitcher to back. And the Rockies' bullpen could be the worst bullpen in baseball. So give me the Blue Jays laying the one-and-a-half runs. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Baltimore Orioles. D.L. Hall and Dean Kramer are your starters. D.L. Hall, of course, was moved to Saturday because of the postponement for the Brewers on Thursday. They moved uh, Freddie Peralta into that Friday slot. Now we see Hall in this game. I mentioned didn't love the matchup for him in this game against a solid Orioles lineup. But the key for me with the Orioles this season is they've struggled offensively early in games. We've seen them put together quite a few rallies. I mean, we saw it in the final game of that Red Sox series where you know Garrett Whitlock pitched well through about five innings to shut out baseball. The Orioles didn't score a run until I think the sixth or seventh. Then they added a couple runs in the eighth, and they won that game in extra innings. But we've seen, if you look at the numbers, the first to sixth inning offensively is a completely different numbers than the seventh on for the Baltimore Orioles. And, you know, it's good to be a team that's never out of a ball game. And Dean Kramer is one of those starting pitchers where sometimes the numbers aren't the best, but he still ended up as one of the most profitable pitcher in baseball last year. And it's kind of funny, the irony of him pitching well in his last game against the Pirates, seven innings of no earned run baseball and of course the Orioles lose that game uh three to two in the, the final score in that one but I think Dean Kramer still a pitcher you want to back you know usually as the Orioles you really back him up offensively I think he pitches well enough and I think the Orioles bullpen while I have my concerns with it I think it's good enough to get the win in the end so give me the Baltimore Orioles on the money line 
Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates take it on the Philadelphia Phillies. Marco Gonzalez and Spencer Turnbull are your starters. Spencer Turnbull's pitched it pretty well for Philadelphia this season. 13, or 11 innings of 13 strikeout baseball. No home runs and only one walk given up. Only, only one unearned run. No earned runs given up for Turnbull this season. It's a small sample, but against some decent teams in the Reds and Cardinals, and both of those were Phillies wins. I think they win this game and cover the run line as well. Both of those games were run line covers. I like Philadelphia here. You know, Marco Gonzalez has pitched pretty well himself this season, but I do think that the only six strikeouts in 11 innings is a concern. He's somebody that in his career has had some issues with the home run ball against a powerful Phillies lineup against lefties. I worry about that as well. I'm going to go with the Phillies and lay the one and a half runs in this game. Next up, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Houston Astros. Andrew Heaney and Ronald Blanco are your starters. Now, for a season where the Astros pitching staff has struggled, you know, badly to start the year, Ronald Blanco has been the key exception. I mean, he's 2-0 with no earned runs given up, only one base hit given up this season. He had a no-hitter against the Blue Jays to start the season, and he flirted with another no-hitter against the Rangers in that next game, six innings of one hit, no earned run ball. Now, he had four walks in that game. He only had four strikeouts. I do think regression is looming. How much longer can he keep it up? I mentioned he was the Cy Young of spring training as he was excellent in the spring, and he carried it over to the regular season. But I still think he's a better option in this game. I mean, Andrew Heaney, he gave up six earned runs to this Astros lineup last week where it was three and two-thirds of four hits, six earned, one home run, and three walk baseball with only two strikeouts to go with it. And that was in 10 to 5 Astros win. And the Rangers have lost the first two games now for Heaney, 5 to 2 and 10 to 5. I'm going to go with the Astros in this one on the money line at home. Next up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Washington Nationals. Joe Boyle and Mackenzie Gore are your starters. Joe Boyle was good enough in that last game against the Tigers for the A's to go on to win that game, 7-1 to the final score. They were a pretty sizable underdog in that ball game, but they went outright 7-1 and you know five innings of six strikeout baseball, pretty solid for Boyle. However, the walks are always a concern. We know he walked a ton of batters in spring training, and so far seven walks in seven and two-thirds innings this year. It's tough to get behind a pitcher like that, especially with the Washington Nationals team that's actually pretty patient this season. When you look at the numbers in terms of walk percentage, Nationals at 10.2%. As a team with a pretty low strikeout rate to go with it. So if Boyle's not missing those bats and earning those strikeouts and he's facing a team that's pretty patient, I do think it's a pretty bad matchup for him. You know, Mackenzie Gore, I was worried about him after that first start against the Pirates. I did not like what I saw. He was much better against the Phillies, in my opinion, in that next game. Five and two thirds, two runs, six strikeout baseball, and a win three to two outright for the Nationals. Another game where they were a sizable underdog, but I think Gord's the better option here. I think the Nationals also have the much better bullpen in this game and lineup to go with it. So give me the Washington Nationals on the money line. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Boston Red Sox. Griffin Canning for L.A., no official starter for the Red Sox. It was a tough game for me because on one hand, you got Griffin Canning, who has struggled notably this season, 8.38 ERA. He just gave up four earned runs and three home runs to this Boston Red Sox lineup with three walks to go with it on April 5th. But on the other side, you got the Boston Red Sox, who, you know, no official starter here. They're kind of all over the place uh, with their starting with their uh, pitching staff in general because you got Lucas Giolito. You pick him up in the offseason. He goes down for what looks like the season. And Nick Pavetta, you know, he was pitching well to start the season. He goes down. So now, you know, an already thin rotation, a lot thinner here. And the bullpen's not great. I mean, Kelly Jansen's a good closing pitcher. But other than that, I don't love the relievers. I think this is going to be a higher scoring game at Fenway Park. But I also don't love the current outlook of this Red Sox lineup because, you know, Rafael Devers is dealing with some injuries and over, I mean, Trevor Story went down early. So to me, I, you know, I lean towards the Angels, I guess, but I, I guess I would take the over here in this Angels-Red Sox game, but a game I'm going to be staying away from. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Miami Marlins. Chris Sale and Max Meyer are your starters. You know, Max Myers pitched well this season for the Marlins, 2.45 ERA. The rotation overall for Miami has not been great, but he's been a solid option. But I do expect some regression for him. Only the seven strikeouts in 11 innings, giving up those two home runs, so at least a home run in each of those first two games. And now you're facing the Atlanta Braves. The best lineup in baseball gets right into pitching by far. I would say it was the best lineup against righties last year. And, you know, this team is just so tough because they, they have the power. You know, they get on base, but they also – don't strike out much this year against righties, at least so far, and their walk rate is through the roof. So I think Meyer is in trouble. The Marlins bullpen we know has struggled. And Chris Sale, you know, he's somebody that I expected a slow start to the season, but he's actually pitching pretty well. 3.38 ERA, two earned runs in his first two games each, not too bad, 13 strikeouts, and he's facing a Marlins team that's got some of the worst numbers in baseball against left-handed pitching this year. I think Sale gives the Braves his first quality start of the season. I think the Braves win this game going away. Give me the Braves laying the one-and-a-half runs. 
Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Logan Webb for San Francisco. Ryan Pepio going for Tampa Bay. But there is no official lineout for this game, so we could see a pitching change. You know, Logan Webb, it's, he's kind of been inconsistent this year. He wasn't great in spring training. I was really worried with him after that Dodgers game because it, it wasn't the fact that he gave up those five runs against L.A. That's going to happen. You know, a lot of starting pitchers are going to struggle against this year's Dodgers lineup. However, it was the 1-12 to ground ball to fly ball ratio for a ground ball specialist pitch to contact guy. That's not what, not at all what you want to see. If You know, Webb is his best when he's keeping the ball on the ground, limiting sharp contact. He was not doing that in that ball game. Gave up a home run in that one. Luckily for him, you know, he bounced back to an extent. I mean, he gave up 10 base hits in that game against San Diego, but he was still only gave up two earned runs, no walks, and his ground ball percentage was above 50%, well above 50%, exactly what you want to see from Webb. Now, I mentioned I think he's a lot better at Oracle Park. I you know I trust him a lot more when he's pitching at home, and here he is on the road. So it may not be the best outing, but I still think he puts together a decent start Ryan Pepio, I mentioned, I think, I think he has a lot of potential. I think he's a lot better than his current 4.63 ERA. You know, a lot of that was because he struggled in that first game. But his last start against the Rockies at Coors Field, he goes six innings, a shutout baseball with 11 strikeouts. So I'm going to go with the Rays here on the money line and the under in this Giants-Rays matchup. Next up, we see the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Kyle Gibson and Ryan Nelson are your starters Two starting pitchers that have struggled this year. ERA is above six. Kyle Gibson at 6.23. He gave seven earned runs in that last game against the Miami Marlins of all teams in that 10-3 loss. And then Ryan Nelson, ERA above eight so far. And we know, you know, he's one of the exceptions in this Diamondbacks rotation where most of these guys pitch much better at Chase Field pitching at home. But Nelson last year had an ERA above eight when he was pitching at Chase Field. And his first start at home this season against the Yankees, two and two-thirds innings, five base hits, five total runs. Four of those were earned and four walks to go with it in a 5-2 to two loss. So I don't really love Nelson in this game. Gibson's tough to trust him after that seven-run performance against Miami. I'm going to go with the over here in Arizona-St. Louis. You could take the over in the first five innings because both of these bullpens are pretty solid, especially St. Louis in terms of projected war. So I'm going to go with the over in the first five. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. We're going to see Matt Waldron and Gavin Stone as the starters. I do think Gavin Stone improves as the season goes along. He's got 11 strikeouts and eight innings of work. The per nines are exactly where you want him to be. The walks are a little bit high, but no home runs given up. And, uh, you know, his last game at Wrigley Field, it was a tough matchup. I think he pitches well here, but, I mean, Matt Waldron's also pitched well this season. I mean, he struggled in his first game, but bounced back in a big way against the Giants. Five and a third of no earned run baseball. Five strikeouts. His control's been there. I think we see a lower scoring game here at Dodgers Stadium. I think there's value at San Diego in this one, but I'm going to take the under in Padres-Dodgers. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Seattle Mariners, the final game for Saturday's card in Major League Baseball. Shota Imanaga and Emerson Hancock are the projected starters. To me, this is a lopsided pitching matchup, two starting pitchers in different directions right now. Hancock gave up eight earned runs and two home runs in his last game against Milwaukee. While he's got upside in terms of the strikeout stuff he has, it's been all over the place, and I can't trust him in this game against a solid Cubs lineup, and especially with Shota Imanaga on the other side in this Mariners lineup that's not not done well to start the year. I mean, they've got some of the worst numbers in baseball offensively. And Imanaga, while he only went four innings in that last game against the Dodgers, it wasn't because of his performance. It was because of the rain. You know, rain delay hit and his short and his start. But he was excellent in that game at that point. Four innings, a shutout ball against L.A. He hasn't given up a single walk or home run or earned run at all this season. 12 strikeouts in 10 innings. He's been excellent. I think he pitches well in this game against a Mariners team that knows a few things about striking out. Give me the Cubs on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in the MLB. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ronelli. Good luck.